Hello and welcome to this lecture about fundamentals of mine planning. This lecture is part of the course Mine Design and Mining Economy and my name is Shabel Mundu. I am a PhD student at Lulio University of Technology, Sweden. This lecture summarizes the mine planning process and the stages involved in it. Understanding the fundamentals of mine planning process is very important as it will help the mining engineers to perform better in an increasingly complicated world. The very first thing that should be clear before going into the details of mine planning process is the definition of or the meaning of the ore. There are different definitions available in the literature. One simple definition states that ore is a natural aggregate of one or more solid minerals that can be mined, processed, and sold at profit. So the key concept about ore in mining is extraction that leads to a profit. For engineers, profits can be expressed in simple equation form as profits is revenues minus costs. The revenues can be calculated by multiplying the units of material sold to the price of each unit. Similarly, costs can be calculated in the similar manner by multiplying the units of material sold to the cost of each unit. So if we combine these equations, we get a very simple equation for the profits, which is profit is equal to the product of units of material sold and the difference of price and cost for each unit. For a given amount of material, the price and cost per unit determine the amount of profit. The price of the material is mostly determined by supply and demand of the material and is not in control of mining engineers mostly. However, the mining engineers can affect and control the unit cost. To remain profitable over a long term, the mining engineer must continually examine and assess smarter and better site-specific ways for reducing cost at the operation. It can be achieved by a thorough understanding of the deposit itself and the tools or techniques used in the extraction process. Cost reduction is becoming more and more challenging because of increasing mining depths and ever more stringent regulations. If the mining engineer fails to keep the cost below the price, there will be no profit. That means there is no ore and for mining engineer, there is no job. So the personal meaning of the ore for the mining engineers is jobs. That's a very simple definition of meaning to remember. Changes in the market can increase or decrease the demand of a mineral product. If there is an increase in the demand, there will be more investment in exploration activities resulting in the discovery of new mineral deposits. However, previously located deposits may become interesting as well. These deposits may then be thoroughly evaluated regarding their economic attractiveness. This evaluation process is termed as the planning phase of the project. The conclusion of this project, this stage or this phase will be preparation of a feasibility report. Based on this report, the decision will be made regarding whether to proceed further or not. If the report states that the deposit is feasible to extract at profit, deposit becomes ore and next phase starts, which is called as implementation phase. It includes the development of the mine and processing facility. It is also known as investment or design and construction phase. Finally, there is production or operational phase, which includes the mining and processing of the ore. The result is product which is sold in the market. The role of mining engineer starts from the planning phase and it continues up to the production phase. The rest of this lecture will focus on the activities which are conducted within the planning phase. There are numerous factors of many different types that should be considered in the initial planning stage. In the initial planning stages of a new uh, mining project. Checklists are often very important when collecting initial data. 
For example, here we will discuss a checklist which is developed by Halls named as Fieldwork Program Checklist for New Properties. Many of the items in this checklist will be of relevance for engineers when preparing mine design reports. The first item in this checklist is topography, which includes different maps that are already available and aerial or land surveys to establish contours, control stations and control. Next item is climatic conditions that includes altitude, temperature, precipitation, wind, humidity, dust, fog, and cloud conditions of the area. Next item is water, both for drinking and processing purposes. It includes sources, availability, quantities, quality of the water, as well as sewage disposal water. Next item is geological structures in that area, influencing the mine itself and its surrounding areas. The next item is mine water as determined by exploration holes to estimate its depth, quantity, and method of drainage. Next item is surface that includes vegetation, water bodies, or any other surface features of the area. Next item is rock type of both the ore and the waste. Next item in the checklist is location for the concentrator. It includes the factors that should be considered for optimum location of the concentrator. For example, mine location, site preparation, process water, tailings disposal, and maintenance facilities location. Next item is tailings pond area that covers the location, type, and effects of the tailings pond on the local area. Another item is land ownership to see who is the current owner of the land, what is current use and price of the land, and also uh, whether it should be purchased or acquired on lease. Next item is power. That includes availability of the power in that area, power lines to the site, substation location, and possibility of power generation at the site. Next item is smelting that includes the availability, methods, rates, and shipping considerations. Next item is roads that includes obtaining area, road maps, road specifications, and the access roads to be constructed to connect the local road networks to the mine site. Next item includes government related considerations for example political climate climate regarding mining if it is favorable toward mining or not any specific mining laws or local mining restrictions next item is economic climate that includes availability of labor wage scales tax structure goods and services availability materials cost and availability extra next item is waste dump location addressing the whole distance all profile and any opportunity to apply leaching process in future another item is accessibility of principal town to outside including methods and reliability of transportation available as well as communication means last item in the in this checklist is listing down all the methods used for obtaining all the relevant information for example maps surveys sampling techniques personal inquiries etc once all the relevant information is acquired we are good to go through the planning phase the planning phase consists of three basic stages conceptual study preliminary or pre feasibility study and feasibility study the planning phase offers the greatest opportunity to minimize the capital and operating costs of the mining project while maximizing the operability and profitability of the project at the start of the conceptual study there is relatively much higher opportunity to influence the cost of the emerging project. However, as the decisions are made correct or incorrect, 
during the course of the planning phase, the opportunity to influence the cost of the work reduces rapidly. The first one, the first stage in the planning phase is conceptual study, which is also known as preliminary evaluation. It represents the transformation of a project idea into a broad investment proposal or plan. The objective of this study is to identify a potential investment opportunity by comparing different methods to define the scope of the project and by comparing different cost estimating techniques. Capital and operating costs are usually approximated by ratio estimates using the historical data. The preparation of such a study is normally the work of one or two planning engineers. Next one is pre-feasibility study, which is an intermediate level exercise. It is uh, normally not suitable to make an invest in investment decision. Its objective is to determine whether the project proposal after conceptual study justifies a detailed analysis by a feasibility study and whether any aspects of the project are critical and need in-depth investigation through functional and support studies. It is an intermediate stage between a relatively inexpensive conceptual study and a relatively expensive feasibility study. Sometimes it is done by two or three member team and sometimes by a multi group as well. The important sections of a pre feasibility report are aim of the study, the technical concept, findings, or the energy and grade, mining and production schedule capital cost estimate, operating cost estimate, revenue estimate, taxes and financing, and cash flow tables. The degree of details depends on the quantity and quality of information available. The feasibility study provides a conclusive technical in environmental and economic base to make an investment decision. It involves optimization of all critical elements of the project by changing them again and again. So it is an iterative process of optimization of all critical elements of the project. It identifies the production capacity, technology, investment, and production cost, sales revenues, and return on investment for the project. It serves as a baseline document for advancement of the project through subsequent phases. Due to the importance of this report, it is necessary to include all detailed information that supports a general understanding and appraisal of the project, evaluation of the project. Or it should include all the details that reasons for selecting the particular processes, equipment, or course of action. There are two important requirements for the feasibility study and also for the pre-feasibility study reports as well. The first one is that the reports must be easy to read and their information must be easily accessible. The other one is very important that states that the parts of the report needs to be read and understood by non-technical people. So those parts should be written in non-technical language and mostly they are the people who make the investment decision. There are certain essential functions of the feasibility report. It should provide a comprehensive outline of established and detailed facts concerning the mining project. 
It should present an appropriate scheme of exploitation with design and equipment list for making accurate prediction of cost and result. It should indicate the likely profitability of the project if undertaken as before specified. It should provide this information to the owner in an intelligent form and also it should be suitable for the presentation to the prospective financer. Cost of these studies involved in planning phase differ significantly depending upon the size and nature of the project, the number of alternatives to be investigated, and many other factors. Feasibility report is usually a combination of different volumes that include geology or reserve and mining volume, metallurgy volume, capital and operating cost estimates volume, legal, finance, and marketing volume, and the final one is summary and economic analysis volume. So the feasibility report is a joint effort of different professionals, including field geologists, mine planners, mine engineers, uh, marketing managers, process engineers, or metallurgists, civil engineers, electrical engineers, uh, some mechanical engineers as well, finance managers, and legal experts, etc. Here is the simplified flow sheet showing the mining department activities in generating the feasibility report. It starts from using the drill hole data to generate the models of mining reserves and incorporating composite assay data, which is usually in the form of ore grade in different blocks of the reserve, and then developing some schedule for extracting the ore from different sections of the reserves, selecting suitable equipment for mining and it ends at completing the mining report, which becomes a part of the feasible feasibility report. In the past, mine reclamation was something that was planned and performed at the end of mining operation, not in the planning stage. However, today the regulations in most of the countries require a thorough and satisfactory plan addressing the environmental aspects of the proposed project. The reclamation plan should provide a detailed should provide detailed guidelines for the reclamation process and fulfill federal, state, county, and other local agencies' requirements. Reclamation plan will be used as a basis to review and evaluate the success of the reclamation process. Reclamation plan is a comprehensive document which should be submitted along the mining plan. It contains all the information regarding logical sequence of steps for completing the reclamation process, the specifics of how the reclamation standards will be achieved, an estimate of specific costs of reclamation, sufficient information for the development of a basis of inspection and enforcement of reclamation, and criteria to be used to evaluate reclamation success and reclamation bond release. Besides the reclamation plan, there can be an environmental plan as well, depending upon the requirements of the regulations that enlist the complete guidelines for the preservation of the environment. That was some basic understanding of the mine planning process. I hope that it helped you to clarify the concepts discussed in this lecture. Thank you. Have a nice time. Thank you so much.